Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Simply Safe. At about six o'clock this morning, we were jolted awake by the sound of our entire barn just vibrating and shaking. We were expecting some winds this morning. They were staying gusts of about 30. I think we ended up with gusts at about 70 miles an hour. It was way crazier than we thought. So we haven't gone outside yet because it just wasn't safe. But now everything has died down. The rain stopped, the wind stopped, the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. So we're gonna go out and see what kind of damage we sustained. Well, so the winds have stopped blowing, but unfortunately, our summer animal housing did not hold up. Chicken tractor, Kira's new chicken tractor, completely took flight. It was over there, took flight. So um, I know this sucker needs to be staked down if it's even salvageable. The whole run is all bent up. I mean, the whole door is damaged and bent and the top is collapsed. So I don't even know if this is gonna function anymore and I haven't gotten it right set up to see. It's the look of a sad ram. What happened, Manny? Did your house blow down? So the sheep summer shelter completely exploded. We had a couple hundred plus foot trees that were sitting here on this hillside. And I was watching them all morning with the wind blowing. Kind of pointed them out to Melissa. We came back out here a few minutes later. They've both been blown down. Yeah. So we got a ton of firewood for this year. I mean, nothing. We were we were already set with firewood for this year, but for next year now is. is All right, here's another one. I've got to grab the chainsaw, deal with these. Oh. So we got a Christmas tree down here. Oh, that's More firewood. That's a really big tree. That goes back. You probably can't tell the video, but that goes back probably a good 75 feet. It's another down tree, and here's the birch oh. tree, right across our driveway, literally within feet of our gate. How is that possible? This is incredible. I thought you were gone for good. <laughs> this is on. We busted our butts putting this gate in while well, last year. Was that last year, right? Yeah, look at this. I cannot look believe. So here you go. Here's a better perspective of how close this giant birch tree came to taking out the gate. Okay, well, I think we're set for firewood for quite a while. Yeah, birch is We're good. good. Yeah, this is good wood, actually. We have some cleanup to do though. Yeah, we do. Now what did we find? Yeah, you know, because there's not enough hazardous <laughs> stuff happening around here. <laughs> Giant yeah. pile of bear scat that wasn't there yesterday. A bear sign? Bear cool. Tool. Yeah. So if we're not dying from falling limbs <laughs> and trees, it's uh, bears. <laughs> no problem. Good stuff. Well, so much for a rest day. We're gonna fire up the chainsaw and get to work. So after talking to a lot of the neighboring properties and different neighbors, we actually got even luckier than just this tree missing our farm gate. A lot of other folks lost their barns and their outbuildings and considering that we live in a pole barn, that's kind of a, a scary thought to think that there's just completely collapsed or the roofs got ripped off. So. All, all in all, just having some trees down and some damage to our animal structures. Um, we were luckily able to recover all of our animals, so we didn't have any losses. And I mean, really it's just clean up and labor, but we got pretty lucky. Yeah, we really did. Yeah. And it was the first time in a long time, actually the first time since living here that I got a little nervous with our living situation, to be totally yeah. honest. Yeah, it definitely pointed out um, every single area that we really, really need to get dialed in before fall hit. We need to, we have a lot to do. We've got a lot to get squared away. So for now, we're going to get the storm cleanup all done. And then we're going to really start focusing on what we need to get done before fall.
Yesterday, we spent the entire day cleaning up after the storm and we got our driveway all cleared up. Today, we are going to be taking a break from the 12 by 12 shed and getting back to work in our tiny home. We woke up to our very first frost of the year and it was pretty cold this morning. So we are going to be getting the heat shield back behind our wood stove on. So we're actually able to utilize that stove for heat and cooking if need be. While we're doing that, we are having a hand pump installed on our well. That way, no matter what happens, we are able to access water for our family and our animals. So are you ready to get to work? Yes. So let's talk about what we're using for the heat shield behind our wood stove. It took me only like six weeks to find this, but I really wanted to bring in that farmhouse look. So we wanted to go with a barn corrugated roofing that was naturally weathered, which is a little difficult to find where it's not all bent up and you can actually use it on a flat wall. Luckily, we were able to find some from a local barn. So we got these two pieces. We're going to be cutting them down to size, figuring out what rusty pieces are the coolest and adding a little character to the room. Those of you who have been following along on the tiny home build will recall that we got our wood stove completely installed. Once that was in, we actually finished most of the work on this back wall here with the laminate flooring set against it. What we ended up being left with was this four foot section back behind the wood stove, which is where we are going to be installing our corrugated metal. So the plan of attack for today is to take some of the one by lumber that we have, we're going to break that down. We're going to use that for some backing strips to actually attach our corrugated metal to. What that one by lumber is going to do is prevent the corrugated metal from actually making contact with the bare drywall and creating a fire hazard. So we'll be left with a nice air gap back behind the metal. Simply Safe is incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe. You just order it online or over the phone, it's delivered right to your home and you set it up yourself in under an hour. You just stick the sensors exactly where you need them. From there, your home is professionally monitored 24-7. If anything happens, they'll make sure the police get called. They've got sensors to cover every window, room, and door, plus lots of great extras like water sensors, temperature sensors, and HD cameras. It's all really easy to use and you get around-the-clock protection for just 50 cents per day with no contracts. The installation was really easy. It took us about an hour. We were able to get up all of the wireless sensors and test them all, and they all worked exactly as they should. We also got up our CO2 and smoke detectors, which are a high priority because we're going to start firing up that wood stove in our tiny house soon. As a retired law enforcement officer, I love that Simply Safe provides its customers with items like a video doorbell. Video doorbells can play a critical role in not only helping to deter crime, but helping to solve a crime should one occur. The evidence that can be collected off of something like a video doorbell can help responding officers not only develop investigative, but also suspect leads, which oftentimes result in an arrest. As a former law enforcement family, we understand the importance of having an alarm system and being able to monitor our property when we are home and when we are away. The one thing we didn't like about the previous companies that we worked with was the long contracts. We were literally locked in for years. We simply save it's month to month and it's only 50 cents a day. If you're interested in learning more about Simply Safe for your own home security needs, check out simplysafe.com forward slash good simple living. The perfect summer is over in a flash and you're on your way. Somebody near is open for tonight, it's not too
trimmed up all the little strips of wood that we needed here on our drywall. You can see that we got one placed at the very top. We got one placed at the very bottom to hold our panels in place. We also got a couple rolls set within the middle and we just basically measured our panels. There were some pre-existing holes, some pre-drilled holes that were already on there. We want to utilize those. So I measured those up and that's what uh, determined where it is that I stuck this second and third row. With all of that done, we're ready to move on and actually secure our panels to the wall. Corrugated metal has been installed back behind our wood stove. That is another project that we can scratch off the list. I yes. think it looks great. What do you think? I love it. And more excitingly, we are now able to fire this sucker up. It is getting colder and colder every morning, so it's going to be really nice to be able to use this now that we have our heat shield in. Yep. Yeah, we just had our first frost yesterday. Yeah. Um, two days in a row, we had frost outside first thing in the morning. So, yeah, we'll be very happy to get this thing fired up, especially yeah. the kids being in their room now. I'm Ecstatic with how this turned out. I think the fact that we were able to use a reclaimed and repurposed material is really cool since we yeah. have everything else in here is brand new and it actually goes really well with the room. It ties in very nicely. Yeah, gives it a nice farmhouse feel. I agree. So we also have the installation of our hand pump going on right now. We're going to go check and see how that's going. Let's go. All right. As you can see, we got the hand pump completely installed here on our wellhead. This is a Baker Manufacturing Company hand pump. It's in a green color, which I like. Mama, you like green? Yep. I love it. So we're very satisfied with this thing, just in kind of tinkering with it for a bit. You can see that it's very heavy duty uh, construction. And this piston is actually very easy to operate, much easier than I expected. And it brings a ton of water to the surface. So the piping that runs up into this thing goes down 80 feet. There is a frost-free drain six feet down. So whenever we aren't actively pumping it, all the residual water will actually flow back down six feet and we don't have to worry about any kind of freezing in the winter time. So it's very nice to have this in. It's something Melissa and I talked about doing since we purchased the property. We like having backups to our backups. So this is just peace of mind knowing that no matter what happens here on the property, we will always have access to our well. Ah, oh, Smith! <laughs> Okay, the non-existent snake has left the pasture. Melissa no longer has to worry. So let's let's discuss our day. What did we manage to accomplish here today? Well, today we were able to get one step closer, actually two steps closer to being prepared for fall and winter. Stop smirking. Keep going, you're doing great. <laughs> we were able to get our water completely self-reliant. So no matter what, we're able to get fresh water for cooking, drinking, and for our animals, and for showering, things like that. We also have the ability now to heat our tiny home and cook if need be using nothing but what we can get from this property. So it's just two things that we really wanted to get done that we were able to knock off the list today. So I feel a little bit more prepared. As do I, very yep. successful day. Awesome. And everything is good to go with the wood stove now. So yeah, we can fire that baby up whenever we need. Cook some snakes. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> All right, guys, as always, we greatly appreciate you watching and tuning in. We will see you on the next video. Until then, be blessed. Have a good day. Have a good week. And we will see you then. Yep. See you guys then.